Welcome back to the channel. Have you ever wondered why sometimes your solar images are razor sharp, and yet other times they're a little blurry, even though you're using the same equipment and your focus is right on both times? Let's find out why. The secret isn't just gear, it's when you capture the sun. Today we're diving into how to optimize your timing to maximize image quality. We'll focus on getting a bright enough image for a full histogram, freezing atmospheric turbulence with short exposures, keeping camera noise low, and finding calm air for good seeing. I've provided a lot of instructions on how to capture a great photo of the sun, and what gear you should use, and how to process it to produce an amazing image. But I've never done a deep dive into when and where you should solar image. Getting this right is vital to producing great images. Whether you image the sun from the desert heat of Arizona or the long summer mornings of northern Canada, your latitude profoundly affects both solar elevation and atmospheric seeing. This tutorial explains why that's important and offers practical guidance on how to get the best possible solar images based on your latitude, the time since sunrise, your altitude, the sun's elevation, and the season of the year. Recently, I was in Edmonton, Alberta for a few weeks with my solar telescopes. I was initially puzzled why the sun looked so dim through the same telescope I used in Arizona at the same time of day. Then it dawned on me that due to Edmonton's 53 degree latitude versus Scottsdale's 33 degree latitude, the sun was lower in the sky than I was accustomed to, and I was looking through more air mass, which was dimming my view. My rule of thumb for when to image the sun that worked in Arizona was completely wrong up in Edmonton. Generally speaking, to get great solar images, you need all of the following. One, bright enough image for a 75% full histogram. This ensures plenty of data without overexposing. And two, the ability to freeze seeing with 10 millisecond or less mono exposures so turbulence doesn't blur your image. And three, being able to mitigate camera noise by not pushing the gain too high, which can create undesirable artifacts. And four, calm air for decent to good seeing, which means minimal atmospheric turbulence. And five, good focus. And finally six, a properly tuned etalon. Being focused and tuned is vital, and I've covered that in detail in my other tutorials. But when and how you image the sun also significantly affects the quality of your images. Your strategy depends upon your setup. If you're imaging in white light or using a single stack F7 hydrogen alpha telescope, brightness is generally high. So concentrate mainly on getting the best seeing conditions. But if you have a double stacked or a longer focal length setup, the sun's going to be dimmer and you'll need to carefully balance the sun's elevation with seeing to get enough light for short exposures. There are five typical solar imaging scenarios. Your strategy to optimize your view of the sun depends upon which one fits your situation. White light imaging with an objective filter or Herschel wedge. In this case, you'll have high relative brightness regardless of your location or telescope. It will be easy to fill your histogram with short exposures and minimal camera gain. So the implication here is concentrate on optimizing seeing regardless of latitude or solar elevation. Next, hydrogen alpha with an F7 single stack telescope. This is a typical Lunt or Coronado telescope configuration. Depending upon your aperture, you'll have medium to high relative brightness. Again, it should be easy to fill your histogram with short exposures and minimal camera gain. Implication, concentrate on optimizing seeing regardless of latitude or solar elevation. Next, hydrogen alpha with an F7 double stack telescope. Now you have 30 to 50% less light getting through to the camera. So you'll have medium to low relative brightness depending upon aperture and solar elevation. Implication, Seeing optimization remains more important, but you should also consider solar elevation as well. Four, hydrogen alpha with an F28 or more single stack telescope. This is the typical F7 refractor plus quark scenario. It's effectively F28 or more because the quark has a built-in Barlow of four to 4.2 times. 
you'll have medium to low relative brightness depending upon aperture and solar elevation. The implication? You need to balance seeing optimization with solar elevation, moderately important. You will also use this same strategy with an f7 double stack scope if you add a Barlow pushing your focal ratio to f14 or f17.5. Finally, you can have hydrogen alpha with an f28 double stack telescope or even a single etalon that's narrower than 0.5. Now you'll have low relative brightness. Implication is it's now vital to balance seeing with solar elevation because the sun could be very dim. Latitude determines the path of the sun through the sky, which in turn controls 1. Solar elevation angle, how high the sun gets in the sky. 2. Rate of solar elevation change, how fast the sun climbs after sunrise. 3. Air mass, the thickness of atmosphere sunlight must pass through. And 4. How quickly the ground heats up, which in turn affects turbulence. If I'm observing in Phoenix, which is latitude 33, in the summer, the sun rises more vertically for me than for an observer in Edmonton, Alberta, which has latitude 53 degrees. This means that the sun rises faster per minute in Phoenix, the sun gets brighter faster, the ground heats up faster, and it reaches a higher elevation at its apex than it does up in Edmonton. All of these influence the quality of solar light reaching your telescope and the stability of the air it's passing through. At low latitudes like Phoenix, the sun rises fast and bright, but the good seeing window is short. In higher latitudes, like Edmonton, the sun climbs slower and stays dimmer longer, but calm seeing conditions last longer. To capture high quality hydrogen alpha images of the sun, you need to balance solar elevation for brightness and atmospheric seeing for image stability. Your latitude affects this significantly. As the sun rises, it appears brighter because its light passes through less atmosphere. At 90 degrees, with the sun overhead at the equator, the sun is the brightest. At 30 degrees elevation, brightness is roughly half of that. Below 15 degrees, the sun is much dimmer due to atmospheric absorption and scattering. In the winter, the maximum solar elevation for all latitudes will be lower, and the length of day shorter as well. This is why you cannot use time since sunrise as a metric that works in all circumstances. Well, why not image the sun when it's at the zenith? At this point, you might be asking, if planetary imaging is recommended when the planet is as high as possible in the sky, why not the same for solar imaging? It's a great question. Let's find out why. The best daytime atmospheric seeing often occurs when the air temperature and the ground temperature are nearly equal usually earlier in the morning, shortly after sunrise. This equilibrium greatly diminishes turbulence near the ground. Before sunrise, the ground is cooler than the air, you have laminar flow and relatively calm seeing. One to three hours after sunrise, the ground and air temperatures equalize and the seeing is optimized. More than three hours after sunrise, the ground begins to warm up convection starts, and seeing begins to deteriorate. Again, at lower latitudes like Phoenix, the sun rises faster, so it warms faster, and so the optimal seeing window is sooner after sunrise and briefer. At higher latitudes, like Edmonton, the sun rises slower, so warming is slower, and the optimal seeing condition window occurs longer after sunrise and lasts longer. Seeing is best when ground and air temperatures are similar with minimal convection, typically one to three hours after sunrise. Seeing degrades as the ground heats up later in the day. Since at higher latitudes the rate of change of the sun's elevation is slower, higher latitudes tend to have a longer window of good seeing. But that still could be when the sun is very low and still relatively dim. Monosolar cameras will produce noticeable noise if you push the gain too high. Here's a rough idea of where the gain is going to start to cause material image problems for many of today's popular solar cameras. If you have to push to this level of gain to get a good histogram, it's better to extend the exposure time above 10 milliseconds instead.
I don't recommend going beyond these levels. 90% of these values or less is recommended. Optimizing solar imaging is a balancing act between solar geometry and atmospheric physics. By understanding how latitude affects solar elevation, how ground and air temperature balance control seeing, you can plan imaging sessions that yield sharper, higher contrast images with fewer surprises. Rule number one, if you can get a 75% histogram fill with a 10 millisecond or less exposure without pushing camera gain too high, while seeing is optimal, disregard solar elevation and latitude concerns. This is the most likely scenario if you're imaging in white light or imaging at F7 in hydrogen alpha with a single stack. This means you should image when seeing is best one to three hours after sunrise. Rule number two, if you can't get a 75% histogram fill with a 10 millisecond or less exposure without pushing your camera gain too high while seeing is good, you must get more brightness. To gain brightness, the sun must be higher. So you need to consider imaging at 25 to 30 percent solar elevation, which might be towards the end or after the optimal seeing window. This is the possible scenario if you are imaging in hydrogen alpha double stack at F14 and or imaging in hydrogen alpha single stack at F28 and or imaging in hydrogen alpha with a etalon that is narrower than 0.5 from Sphinx. You might have to image near or just after the optimal seeing window and accept some trade-offs. Note that my 10 millisecond guideline is a bit flexible. If you're imaging a full disk or if the region you're imaging is not moving around very much, you can push that to 15 milliseconds if you need to. But if you're zoomed into a fast moving active region or a sunspot, even 10 milliseconds could be a bit long. Well, what if the sun is plenty bright or too bright for a 75% histogram with a 10 millisecond exposure and a maximum safe gain. First, reduce your exposure to about five milliseconds. If the histogram is still over 90% full, reduce gain towards zero. If it's still too bright, reduce the exposure until a 75% histogram is achieved. If the sun is not bright enough for a double stacked or F28 hydrogen alpha full histogram, 90 to 120 minutes after sunrise in your locations, add up to about 30 minutes for every 10 degrees of additional latitude over 30 degrees. This should make the sun's elevation high enough that it will be bright enough for a good image. Well, what about seasonal considerations? Those of us in the Northern Hemisphere understand the sun is higher in the sky in the summer and lower in the sky in the winter. What this means from a practical perspective is you can image 30 to 60 minutes closer to sunrise in the summer compared to winter and still get the same elevation and brightness. So if your setup is one of those that needs more brightness, keep this in mind as well. It's also extremely important to choose a location that helps seeing. You can mitigate ground heating where possible. Set up so you're looking over grass or a farmer's field or forest or snow or water. Avoid imaging directly over rooftops, pavement, or concrete. Relocate to a higher altitude if possible, where there is less air density. What about altitude? Isn't the sun going to be brighter at 7,000 feet versus sea level? The answer is yes, the sun is going to be brighter at 7,000 feet versus sea level, but only by 3%. A much bigger consideration for altitude is getting above the heavier air, which should improve the seeing dramatically. That's your real altitude advantage. So if you live near the mountains, you might consider driving to a higher elevation. Or if you live near a lake, you might consider driving to the western shore so the sun's rising from the east over the lake. But remember, the main benefit of a higher elevation is better seeing, not a brighter image. So there you have it. First, identify which of the five imaging scenarios fits your situation. If you don't get a great histogram when seeing is best, you need to consider and balance the optimal time after sunrise and altitude of the sun for best seeing with sufficient brightness for a good histogram, which in turn is affected by the sun's elevation, which in turn is affected by your latitude and the season. Thanks for watching. If you found this helpful, please like and subscribe. 
Drop your questions or tips in the comments below.